Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. Growing up on a farm in Wisconsin where we first raised farrow to finish hogs and then later saddle and draft horses, I had friends who lived on dairy farms. I never envied them. While our family worked pretty hard on the farm, my dairy farm friends always worked harder and longer. I'm glad to have this half hour to talk about dairy farming and the commitment made by dairy farmers to produce quality milk on their family farms. Every June, many Wisconsin counties host a dairy breakfast where they invite the public to come out to the farm and learn about dairy farming while enjoying a breakfast of pancakes, eggs, sausage, and bacon. When Gerald Schmidt of Rice Lake, Wisconsin told me he used his team of Belgian horses to give rides to visitors from the field to the farm, I asked if I could come by too. I met Kim Barda, who heads up the Barron County Dairy Promoters, and he told me a little bit about this year's event. Hi, I'm Kim Barda. I am chairman of the Barron County Dairy Promoters. We're a sponsoring organization of uh, the Dairy Breakfast. And today we're at what farm? We're at it's Rainbow Valley Dairy Farm. It is the, the Wolk family uh, near Elmina, Wisconsin. And this is our 47th annual breakfast. We're the longest running dairy breakfast in the state of Wisconsin. What's the purpose of a dairy breakfast? It's, uh, as uh, time has gone by, less and less people are directly involved with farming and this gets a lot of people a chance to come and, and see an operating dairy and uh, hopefully learn something about how, we, how well we take care of our animals and uh, you know, how, how things are done. We started way back in 1975 when uh, uh, Lee Becker, about, well, lives about six miles away from here, and got the idea and went to the Barron County Farm Bureau and said, well, we should have an on-farm breakfast for celebrate June Dairy Month, and he offered up his farm in 1975, and that was our first breakfast. They served about uh, a couple hundred people at the time, and since then it's just continued to grow until we've been over 3,000. So this is a more traditional setting, a 60 cow herd, and a uh, really nice heifer facility, and uh, yeah, it's a, it's a real nice farm here. I think you're going to see probably more and more of the smaller ones disappearing because a lot of the younger people don't uh, don't want to be that committed because it's it's a big commitment to do it. And we did it a lot of years ourselves, and it, it just uh, takes a whole lot of time. And there's usually never much time off, and, uh, and a lot of people don't want to do that now. So you know, and the bigger ones give people some time off, and uh, you know, so there. But there's still room for both, and I hope we continue to see a lot of small dairies around yet. You know, no time off for being sick. You, work's still got to be done. You know, animals got to be cared for, and uh, and if you, you don't care enough to work that hard at it, you shouldn't be doing it. And that's kind of how I always felt. So, how many people do you expect to feed today? We're hoping the 2,800 to 3,000 people somewhere in there. Or so and that's uh, we've broken 3,000 about five five or six times now before. So and if we have a nice weather, the weather's the biggest factor as to how many people show up. And so far, it's looking great. So it's a beautiful morning. You've got how many volunteers working? There's about 130 volunteers to uh, make this whole thing happen between setup and today and cleaning up and everything. So, yeah. And right now, as we're talking, it's about 6 10 in the morning. That means some of these people have, well, they, yesterday there was a lot of work done. Yep. But probably getting going, what, at 4 4 30 this morning? I was here at 4 o'clock to get the coffee started, and then everybody else starts showing up at 5 ish to get the cooking stuff, the rest of the cooking going. So. Yeah. You can tell that they've got farming backgrounds because they're so cheerful so early in the morning. Yep, yeah, uh, everybody that works at the vent really likes it and it's it's fun to, it's, I love it when people are having fun here working. We've got our all Wisconsin omelet, it's basically a scrambled egg with, uh, we've got this turkey ham in it which is from, from Barron County product from the turkey store in Barron. And, uh, and the cheese comes from the AMPI which is, donates all the shredded cheese for it. and. Uh, and there's cheese on the tables and the applesauce and the butter for the pancakes and uh, two of our Barron County maple syrup producers are here providing maple syrup. So, good meal. That's Great. All. Yeah. 
Anything else you want to say? Well, there's a couple of 100-year-old tractors out in front that if you, you'll probably get some of those, look at those later. And uh, it's just uh, been a great, it's a great event. It's fun to do it yet. It's a lot of work, but I'm still enjoying it. So I guess we'll keep doing it for a while, so. That's terrific. Yeah. Thank you, Kim. I appreciate yes. it. Yes, yes. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you for being here. If you enjoy seeing how our ancestors lived during America's Rule Yesterday, you're going to love looking at these books. Volume 1 is Fieldwork, showing horses and vintage tractors preparing seed beds, planting, cultivating, and harvesting the crop. Volume 2 shows the work being done in the barn and farmyard, feeding and watering the livestock, getting the crop into the barn, milking the cows, shearing the sheep, and collecting the eggs. In Volume 3, we go inside the home to see the family in the kitchen canning vegetables, in the parlor listening to the radio, and in the dining room for family supper. We also head into town to shop at the general store or visit on the town square on Saturday night. Each book has over 140 large format pages. They sell for $24.95 each, or you can buy two for $44.95, or all three for $54.95 plus shipping. Call 1-877-647-2452 to order. That's 1-877-647-2452. We're back at the Barron County Dairy Breakfast and meeting the Host Farm family. Okay. Uncle Gilbert, he farmed okay. us my grandpa Calvin. Okay. And Calvin passed away in 2012, but Calvin and Gilbert farmed as a partnership. 40 years. 40 years, and then my dad Glenn took it over. Okay. And, uh, and then my brother and I were in the next generation and we're in the process of uh, changing things over from Glenn to my dad or my brother and myself. Uh, no farm transition is easy. Right. You know, there's always a lot of moving parts and trying to get everything figured out and, you know, but we're working through it. Yeah. It's a family farm. Yep. At the end of the day, everybody's in it together and it's what it is. How many do you milk now? Uh, we still have 60 cows. We did an addition onto the barn and about was a 1960, 1962. That put Kelvin and Gilbert up to 60 cows. And we've been at that since then. Uh, we don't really have many big plans to be a big, huge dairy farm. We like to work with the cows and do the farming. We don't want to be people managers. Right. So we may, we're thinking of maybe going with some robotic milkers just to free up some extra time. There's a lot of projects around here that don't get done just because you're short on time. Right. So we may do something like that and maybe add a few more cows just to help offset the cost of the robots. But there's no set in stone plans. We definitely don't want to be a big three, four thousand cow dairy. We like to work with each other and just stay small. I grew up on a hog farm. Um, we did farrow to finish when I was a little kid, mm -hmm. and that was a lot of work. But we had dairy farmers down the road, and I sure didn't want to be one of those kids. <laughs> that's really that's a commitment. Um, you guys don't take time My off. Wife, you don't know, take time off. I haven't had a vacation in thirty years. Because you can't get someone to do it for to, you. I don't want to. Okay. All right. right. Well, that's good. I, uh, when I was younger, I used to get up at like five o'clock and then we went to like 4.30 and four and now I get up at 3.30. Wow. And I, uh, a lot of times I'm just 60 and I'm working like I'm 30, which doesn't go good. Right. But, right. uh, that's what I like. I see the sunrise every morning. I've seen more sunrises than a lot of people. Things have changed. My dad... And the Gilbert, you know, their wives didn't work. My wife was a school teacher, so she worked. And now everybody works. I mean, the place looked a lot better when my mom and Donna were around taking care of the lawn and the flowers Flower beds. and the gardens and all that. And now it's like extra work you got to do later to get it done. And sometimes the lawn don't get mowed and it's like, uh And then with me transition, I, in 2000, I transitioned into no-till. Uh huh. And uh, I did it because the investment in in uh, equipment, but it's just way we see the benefits of doing no-till with the soil. So the hay ground that I parked my car on, you turned into haylage just recently, probably. Yeah, we, had, we actually had sunflowers in there, a sunflower maize we do. Oh, really? And I uh, harvested them off. We planted rye in. Okay. So there's been no chemical sprayed on that. And uh, we harvested the rye off of it and then the grass borders around it. And now we'll uh, probably come in to give it a shot of Roundup to kill off the rye because it'll grow up and then we'll plant sunflowers in there again for this year. After that, they'll have to be rotated to a different area, but it's so handy close to the road to come in. 
The sunflowers are used for oil? No, They're just for tourism. The seeds? People come okay. in for tourism. Okay. Dollar a head, and then the maize, dollar or two to go through the maize, and it's worked out good for us. So you don't do a whole lot with the crop then? We actually chop them for heifer feed. Do you really? Okay. Yep. All right. Well, that works pretty good. Down. Eat them right down. <laughs> awesome. That's terrific. Yeah. We, well, we, well, we found over the course of the years, I believe we started the sunflowers in 2017, the sunflower maize and trail. And people want to get out on the farm. Yeah. You know, you have people from the city. Right. And small towns, they just, they want to be in that rural country setting. Right. And, you know, this. And take their kids out there. Yeah, take the kids out, let them run around. They have picnics out there. So... It just it works out well. We don't charge much for the sunflower maize. One dollar for the maize, one dollar for a head of sunflower, and people just love it. Right, right. When your uncle was a kid, most people lived in the country. Right. Today, it's 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 gone more than just the other way. It's very few people living in the country now. Yeah. An event like this does a lot of good, doesn't it, for showing people? Yeah, that's what I think. It gets it's a way to get people on the farm. They can see things. Right up close. We got a pen. They can pet a calf. They can walk through the barn, see the milk house. They can just hands on. So it's a good way to get connect the city and the country and the farm. I don't know a lot about cattle. I know hogs and I know horses. I um, are they Holsteins? Yeah, registered Holsteins. Okay. All right. Uh, they've been most of them been registered for a long time, like yeah. generations, and I've like we're showing cattle and stuff. We've kept with it, I guess. There's a mo mostly black and white Holsteins, and uh, uh, probably ten percent are red and white Holsteins. Okay. And when you show the cattle, you're showing them at the state fair, county fair, we, we show at the local, dairy expo, local shows, um, county fair, state fair, and then uh, um, I showed one time at World Dairy Expo. We had a real good one. In the Minnesota yeah, state Minnesota, fair. Yeah, Minnesota state fair. Okay. And Wisconsin state fair in 4-H. That so. was pretty much as we were kids. Like right. I got, my three-year-old to be doing it once she gets old enough to do it and enjoying my break <laughs> from that right right it's a lot of work well, yeah. i mean it's a commitment yeah and you already got a lot of commitment going on yeah with this yeah right today. right right but, well i mean every day yeah. every morning every night yeah every weekend yeah every holiday every exactly. sick day exactly <laughs> yeah the sick, sick days are the worst <laughs> right i my neighbor i remember watching him throw up in the gutter and then go back to milking oh, yeah. um Whereas we would have been in bed. Yeah, um, yeah it's... I've done, um, I've done that. <laughs> of course you have. Yeah, yeah. We're, we sell to a cooperative. Um, they embrace the small farms yet, I guess. Um, I mean, they, they take cows from, uh, you know, our 60 cow dairy. And I actually toured one of their farms that they get milk from out in South Dakota. And, like, all together they got 60,000 wow. cows. You know, so, wow. I mean, it's... They're, Everything. They're, they're processor for everybody. So you've got a daughter... Yep. Do you old. hope she gets into Darien? I mean, it'll be here if she wants it. You okay. Know, right, right. It's not. It's no not pressure. Required. Hey, I also got a 10 month old son, too, so. Okay. I mean, All right. You know, that doubles your chances. Of... Right. Yeah. <laughs> not, not required, but I mean, it, yeah, it'd be nice. But, yeah. You know. Yeah. I mean, it was a good, a good way for you to grow up? Oh, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't trade it. Yeah. And you too, Kurt? Yeah. It was, you learn how to work. Yeah. You, you know, I. A hard day of work for me is, you know, is nothing where a normal everyday person is probably be pretty tired out. Right, so, right. It's early to late with work all the way in between. Yeah, I mean, that, that's normal for me. You don't sleep in. You know, weekends you get up early and where a lot of other people, they sleep in until 8, 9, 10 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and you also learn to be self-reliant. Something breaks, you tend to fix it. Um, you have to. Yeah. I mean, for gotta, the most you part. You keep rolling. Right. Or, or get by till you can fix it, right? Right. You know? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Twine, string, barbed wire, duct tape, bale right. wire. Right. Right. A lot of farmer carpentry right. to get it to get it to work until, like you say, you get somebody else that can make you it saw right. You my other pair of shoes I just changed. You would understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was just because it, it was July of 2019. We had a real big wind event go through and it took down our machine shed and that's where our generator is stored wow so uh, the generator got ruined in the storm so we had wow. uh, get a part for it at midnight to keep on going because the cows had to be milked the next morning right and right the farm was a disaster so but we were actually hoping to host the dairy breakfast in 2020 which we wouldn't have been because of covid but then the big storm came through in 2019 and blew our shed down 
So this uh, machine shed where everybody is sitting and eating, it was built in the fall of 2020. So it actually worked out okay. It's all cleaned out and looking good. This the same team I filmed before? Yes, it is. Yeah. Is it Rock really? Rolls, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, they're, uh, they follow the years, so they're 21 and 22. They don't last a full day's work like they used to. Yeah. Do you have replacements coming up? Well, kind of just got my eyes out. Okay. You can have 3,000 people here. Sometime. Yes. That's yeah. amazing. That, that's a big breakfast. You know, and it's a great day today. It's cool. It's nice. I wouldn't be surprised. And you know, these smaller dairy farms will bring more people than these big right. ones. Absolutely. Because and it, and it's people cool. still, I mean, this is what these smaller farms are where it started you know right right well like you you your dad dairy right yeah my actually goes all the way whoops hold, right right there you go yeah it goes all the way back to my great great grandpa That's you awesome. know he started that farm in 1881 wow. <laughs> so i'm the fifth generation on our home farm these are my granddaughters we got lila and elsie elsie there you go how you doing good, good. Good morning. Good morning. You guys, you guys on a ride up? Yeah. I'll pull ahead here. We got some cars where we need to park. Ready? Okay. Yeah. Guys are keeping the line fed. Is that your job? Well, we're trying to keep them moving here. Okay. Just trying to keep yep. the peace. <laughs> yeah. No feet. fighting here over them, you know. It's, right. That's sometimes a challenge. No doubt. Yeah, pretty cool. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing well, thank beautiful, you. Beautiful, beautiful morning. Gorgeous morning. Yes, yes. Wonderful to see so many cheerful people so early in the morning. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Great to see. So these are cheese curds? Yes, they are. They just go, no batter or anything, they just go right into the oh, deep fat no. fryer. Got little, nice. We got some secret recipe. Yeah. And these Those curds are made but with love. So yeah. they're the main ingredient. Yes. So I don't know if we called you that. Yet. So you guys are from a creamery? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. What's the name of it? Ellsworth Co op Creamery. So I grew up in Wisconsin, but I'm now in Iowa. Okay. And in Iowa, when you buy cheese curds, they don't squeak. Is that a problem? Are cheese curds supposed to squeak? Yeah, they're supposed to squeak. Yeah, they should. Maybe they ain't quite the right ones. Right, right. Well, it's strange. Some of them come from like New Jersey or Ooh. Kentucky or yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Awesome. How big is Ellsworth's Creamery? Oh, we got about 250 farms. And we, uh, <laughs> we take in about uh, over two million pounds a day. Okay. All right. No. Yes. So you guys um, service probably lots of different sized dairies. Yes. Yes. Anywhere from fifteen cows to uh, fifteen hundred cows. Fifteen. So the, a lot of times I hear from farmers that the trucks won't go down the road for smaller operations, but that's not true in your case. Not no. in our case. Not, nice. Not at Ellsworth Creamery. That's great. We serve up some all. Okay. 
and you're mostly doing cheese curds yes. curds oh cheese curds that's what well, you specialize that's in. what we specialize in. terrific yep and then people can find your cheese curds in grocery stores throughout Barron County throughout the state throughout, throughout your the country United states even yep. in Alaska and Hawaii yes so we cover them all thank you gentlemen I appreciate yeah. it yep, you're welcome you better try this program is available for purchase to order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information. Or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.